You have your books? Yes. Okay. It's just I'm, I think Lynn is the only one. Hi, Lawson. Morning, Irvin. Hello, Lawson. sister. Hey, brother. How are you? I'm grand now that you know who's better. I know. Me too. Who's better? That's good. Yeah. Is Eleanor better? Yes, yes. She's better. Yes, yes. I know who. <laughs> I bet you yeah. get up out of two. I'm glad she's yes. better. Oh, we we are so grateful. <clears throat> okay, well we um this is it. This is our last time together. Uh. In this book. Uh I I do have a schedule. The next class is on Celtic practices. And it will begin uh, April 4th, and we'll go through sometime in June uh, whenever Doug Bischoff begins. So okay. I don't know what that date is yet, but I'm willing to go to June 20th. So. Oh, oh my we're, God. We're, gonna, we're not going to have anything in March. No, because of because we have a Wednesday night program. Okay. Yeah. Yay. Makes so why up. should I suffer? Because <laughs> you're not there. <laughs> you can do it. Me I too. You can do it on Zoom. I think we're gonna zoom it, but um and the material will be available, but uh it's it's a uh, five weeks on the litany of penitence, yeah. taking a couple of those uh petitions each week and then trying to pair them with a movie. Ooh. So um I, I'm doing my best. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the first movie that we're going to watch is, um, uh, we'll show clips from, is Unbroken. Not the uh -huh. not the first movie, the second movie, The Path to Redemption. Uh -huh. um, and uh, we're going to show that with Lawson's suggestion. We're going to show them Sundays um, after coffee hour. So if people want to see the whole movie, or they can stream it at home, or whatever, but... We will do it uh, here and then show clips from it. Welcome, Lynn. Sorry, it's okay. <laughs> I was plugging the I was plugging the Latin program. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is the name of? Have you got the book on the um that starts in April? It's uh, Christine Painter is her name. Um, um, I'm gonna look it up and then I'll say it before the end of the program, the end of the class. How's that? Okay. Is it, is it Christine it, with a K or a C? Okay. With a C. Okay. I've lent it to someone, so I don't have it in my office. Uh, but I um, have it on my Amazon, so I can look it up that way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What date do we start in April? April fourth. Because I'm, we're going to Scotland, and I don't know very much about all of that. So I would. When are you going, are you going to Scotland? I'm going to Scotland. Hmm. The last two weeks in April. We're going on a cruise to. Oh. Scotland and Ireland. Okay, it, the name of the book is The Souls, Souls with a, you know, apostrophe S, Slow Ripening, 12 Celtic Practices for Seeking the Sacred. And her last oh, name is not painter, it's paint, paint nerd, right? P, like paint with N E R then. P A I N T N E R? Yes, ma'am. And 12 practices. 12 Celtic practices. I'm just waiting until Ellen gets the book. Ellen will get the book. <laughs> <laughs> I'll solve my problem. <laughs> if I write it down somewhere, I'll never see it again. <laughs> okay. So that's what we'll do. And I, I, I've set it up for 12 weeks. One practice a week. Uh, it may be that we collapse some of those if, if my timeline is not the same as other timelines. So I'll try to... I, I put mine out there. And we'll just see how that works. Out. Well, maybe you make a stop at Iona and do your twelve practices. That would be lovely. You can send us. You can uh, send us Zoom from there. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. All right, beloved. Let's see where the last two chapters are. 
uh, he gives two chapters to hope, um, two psalms to hope, and um, Psalm 92 and Psalm 150. And uh, I didn't really produce many notes on this because it's pretty self-explanatory, but I, w I did give you a copy of T.S. Eliot's um, Four yes. four, part of Four quarter, Quartets, and then a, a hymn, a, a, a choral setting by Natalie Sleeth, which if any of you have ever had children in a children's choir, they've sung something by Natalie Sleeth. So, um, but... Uh, the reason I chose what well, he gives the suggestion in his writings about the T.S. Eliot part in the beginning is my end uh, and which is uh, the theme of these two psalms mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that there is a circle that we repeat ourselves in a in, in what he would say is a good way um that in recognizing it, that every end is a new beginning, uh, and that we continue that way toward hope. Um, his hope being one, um, I, I think maybe different from a Christian hope in, a, in one small sense. The Psalms hope in 92, I think, is about the Sabbath, right? And this, what the Sabbath gives us rest and return rest and return and that's uh, its purpose we know the reason it was given in the ten commandments was for that very reason and so we um we and the re and what did you know we, what did god do on the seventh day I, I i recognize that that was written from that same point of view as the as, as the folks who established the sabbath but it was ordained in that way right uh, the Sabbath day is for rest, and that even God rests. Um, so that's this. This Psalm ninety two is his. He titled it a song for the Sabbath day. There's also this sense of hope toward a new Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's a hope as well on the Lord's day. In the Lord's day, we we have lots of different phrases for it in the Old Testament, but that's that's what it is. It's the reclamation of the promise of Eden. It's the return uh, of all good things to the good Creator. It, it it that and that's what the the Psalm I think gives us. And he goes into a great deal of detail about what. Um, uh, Tense, verb tenses, again, and looking at verb tenses and what they can tell us. And it was interesting. Is this the chapter that gave the, yeah. And I looked at some others. And it is just, it's so interesting that uh, whatever translation you have may give you a different translation. You may, it may be in the future. It may be in the present. Um, it may be, in his case, um, uh, uh, most of them, none of them are, uh, of the Anchor Bible does it in the past, where it's something that's already happened, as opposed to something that we're anticipating. Uh, I don't know, does that make a difference to people when you read, when you read the song? Glossom. Um, it did make a difference when I read the song, but it explained what I have learned uh, for a long time about prayer, how we're supposed to pray. We are supposed to pray for what we want more so than where we are in the present. So if somebody's sick, instead of saying, Lord, heal the cancer, you say, thank you, Lord, for bringing health to a uh, person's uh, liver, if that's what's hurt. Yeah. Uh, what's disease so you pray as if the future is now you pray for what you want instead of what the bad that is now and that really is consistent with what we're seeing in these hopeful uh psalms mm -hmm. right Absolutely. What, because what may be swirling around us is not that is not the hope 
that is what is happening. There's no doubt about that. We're not denying that. But you're, yeah, this look into the uh, what we what the promise is, right? Because the promise that God gives each of us, even when we're talking about health issues, is wholeness, is redemption, is healing, right? I don't know what that looks like. You don't know what that looks like. God knows what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So that makes absolute sense, Lawson. Yeah. Yeah. And what a way to change how one, to have a connection between something that means so much to you, particularly prayer and its uses in healing. And then to see that kind of born up in the, in the book, oh. how, how delightful that must well, be. Yeah. Well, Lawson, will you say that again? I mean, just the very first part, what you said about okay. the difference in the prayer. Okay. Um, you pray for your heart's desire. You pray for what you want, not so much what is getting you down in the present. So if, if somebody told me a friend of mine had have liver cancer, I'm going instead of saying, dear Lord, please remove the cancer, I am going to say, Dear Lord, thank you for giving health to so-and-so and and for restoring wholeness to their liver. You know, we're supposed to pray specifically, but you pray for what you want as if the future, you want to pull the future of wholeness into the present of brokenness. Does that... Well, it's a faithful statement, too. Right. So yeah, it's not just about the promise. words. It's about what the words mean, because they indicate a faithful, uh, uh, that you have faith in what God can do. Uh-huh. Right? I mean, uh-huh. and, 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 and to, um, this is taking it too far, and then I'll be quiet. But sometimes there are other steps that need to be taken before that wholeness is granted. Um, sometimes the disease is just a symptom of a deeper spiritual problem. And so sometimes when our prayers aren't answered just like that, uh, it's because God wants to work uh, maybe health into our ability to forgive people or, um, you know, that it, it's, it's not simple. It's complex like all spiritual issues can be. Uh, but uh, again, it is trying to pull the future hope into the present. Okay, okay. Well, Rebecca. Yeah. Hey, well, you do not know. I'm going to get Ellen then. Can you do that? Yeah. Sorry, y'all. I'm not trying to interrupt. We're just, we're having a moment with the machine that wants to reboot at 1029. It has some. You, go. you got it? Yeah, it hit hard. Oh, I wasn't, I, I wasn't being forceful enough. <laughs> sorry, because I think you knew what to do. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, like I'm just oh, no, no I'm not going to say any more. But um, no, but I just, I, just I, said, I think what we've seen again, time and again in the Psalms, these are poets, poetry about faithfulness and the things that can get in the way of our faithfulness. But what we see around us oftentimes impacts our ability to be faithful to trust in the message that God has for each of us because it's confusing. It's contradictory. It's, it's not what we want. It's painful. It's suffering, right? This is what he's been talking about throughout these Psalms. And so uh, this idea of into the future is a way for us to proclaim a faithfulness about that God, about our God, about how God behaves. This is what's been most in- impelling and compelling for me. Um, that accentuates the positive. Accent- yes, that, well, that would be your <laughs> strong suit, Ginger. <laughs> Accentuating the positive. Because I can often, uh, it's not that I don't believe but I, I, I can we from the beginning of the book, I could see how oftentimes my faith in other things, not that I don't have faith in doctors or medicine or uh, the goodness of people, or you know what I mean? I do have that, but oftentimes that supplanted my faith in God. 
And I, I have been overwhelmed by that sense in a very good way, in a, in a very good way. So, um, and, and it's just a slight nuance, perhaps, like a tense of a verb is a slight nuance that, that uh, is, was so restorative, it's just so restorative. So, and, and your collaboration on this, uh, Lawson, from that point of view, has given that a little bit more, you know, it's put some supports on that wall or that structure for me. So, thank you. Makes a good prayer. It does. It Allison, does. Allison, I, I, I just particularly thought this, this um, line down, it's on my second page, but I'm on Kindle, but... I'm going to read it. It says, what the faithful have to depend on is their dream, their hope, that which they anticipate. That a time will come when everyone see, will see the tangible worth of goodness in the same way that is so clearly imprinted in the heart of the faithful. And then, and then he goes on to say, to, to accept the current reality as truth is to substitute the shell for the nut, a terrible mistake. I just thought that kind of captured the whole deal. It does. And that is on the bottom of 138 and moving to the top of 139. Yeah. That is that that is a it is. He is a, he does it well there. And what a great expression to substitute yeah. the shell for the nut. Yeah. Yeah. Uh moving further on down that page. Uh I love the way that he has given uh, language to this concept of where he says, additionally, psalms, like all poetry, are replete with intended verbal confusion. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that just takes care of everything I don't understand. That's it's right. just the way poetry and psalms are, which I get in poetry because it's often confusing, right? Mm -hmm. God is described by the psalmist as having helped the devotee when in fact we learn through the course of the psalm that God's aid is what the psalmist prays for. Help is yet to come. Mm -hmm. Thus on reading a psalm, we may come to the end and realize how time has been manipulated and how expectation and hope has been depicted as a visible reality. We come Where to understand we? faith. Where are in the middle of page 139. Okay. I do have a giant question mark by that paragraph. <laughs> I just must have what's, known that. What's the difference in a giant question mark and a regular chest of chest mark? Question well, mark. this one goes down the whole paragraph and it's a giant one instead of oh, okay. a little I, I'm glad I asked because that helps me. <laughs> I'm glad too. Well, he says that through that confusion, we come to understand that faith creates its own truth. Mm -hmm. And that if we let the words carry us, then the strength of the psalmist's belief provides us as readers with hope as well. Uh, that's uh, to me. It might be a it might be a, a question mark for you, Kate. But for me, I have an exclamation point by it. That um, or a, and a star. That means um, sometimes when I think I'm confused, perhaps this is just. I'm just waiting. I am waiting to understand that truth that I do not yet know. Well, I didn't have a question mark or a star, but I do want to add that because I underline and highlight stuff on my Kindle, and I highlighted that that what you just read. I highlighted in pink, which is okay. the highest level of highlight. <laughs> I've got four different colors, and pink is the most important. That's okay. Good. Well, good. Well, so we all I'm, read the paragraph. Just, we all have different ways of marking things up. Yeah. All right. Well, let's read Psalm 92, which he says uh, is built out of de deliberate confusion of past, present, and future. Kate, can you read this morning Psalm 92? As it's Maybe. Written? As it's maybe. written, maybe, okay. Okay. Um, a psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. It is good to thank God and sing to your name most high, 
to proclaim your kindly love at daybreak, your faithfulness each night. With a zither and a harp, with the sound of the lion, because you gladdened me with your deeds, Adonai, of your handiwork I chant. How wonderful your works, Adonai. How subtle your designs. A crude person does not know. The fool does not understand this. That the wicked sprout like grass. And every evildoer blossoms only to be destroyed forever. But you are exalted for all times, Adonai. For your enemies, Adonai. For your enemies perish. All evildoers will be scattered. You raise my horn high like that of a wild animal. I am soaked in freshening oil. As my eyes peered ahead, while my enemies rise up against me, my ears hear the righteous bloom like a date palm. They thrive like a cedar in Lebanon, planted in the house of Adonai. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are full of sap and freshness, proclaiming that Adonai is upright, my rock, in whom there is no fault. Beautifully read. That was beautifully read. Thank you, Kate. Well, thank you. Well, what else do you uh, would like to say uh, uh, after hearing that again read? Is there anything? There is some negativity in the psalm. I mean, that's obvious. This isn't all like, you know, God is great and God is good. And so we thank God for, you know, there's other things in here. There's some criticism of people. Of, um, right? A crude person does not know. A fool does not understand. The wicked. Now, we've heard that before. Remember in Isaiah? We've heard this expression about that, you know, the sprout like grass and then they die. These are, this is common language among the prophets about what can happen to people or what the hope is. That nothing is, nothing evil is going to last as long as the goodness of God. Nothing evil will last. Right? So there's this idea of time in, in the poem. And that uh, if nothing lasts, if nothing like that lasts, then this is a future promise. The bottom of page 143. Those who don't trust in God look at a world in which justice does not prevail. And these assume that that's all there is. They feel that no other forces operate in the universe save their own power. And I would say to you that I think I know that I do, perhaps many of you do, slide in and out of this notion what is God's power? What is our power? You know, we just, it's a, it, yeah, I can be right there in that. They see the blossoming of materialism and selfishness and join in what they think is the joyous life. And I would say instead of they, often we don't understand that there is a promised future quite different from the present reality. And Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, but it is so hard to um, sometimes hold on to that. Again, with most things, we have to hold on to, he writes, that of the future promise, and we hold on to the future promise. 
It occurs to me if we if we practice what Lawson was talking about in prayer, it, that in itself can change our our attitude about the the pain and suffering and evil we we'll see around us if we pray in the with the future promise in mind, it can change our whole attitude toward, you know, I've been going through that myself with praying for something that just doesn't change and, and getting frustrated. Where are you, God? And, um, and now all of a sudden something nice is happening. God is working. And, you know, if I had been able to cling to that assurance all along, I would have been in a much better place. But so in spite of me, it works. <laughs> in spite of my negativity sometimes. Well, there are seasons in our lives, right? There are seasons in our lives when uh, sometimes it's easier to do certain things. Sometimes it's more difficult. Um, uh, but I think if we if we can take it a message from the psalm and uh, and and um, in the best sense, God is constant. God is constant. Thank goodness. Right? Yes. Um, even, uh, even as we are confronted with things that can seem overwhelming and are overwhelming, there's no doubt about that. I don't, I think a, a caring, compassionate, empathetic person would be very difficult to not be impacted by life the question just is you know how how can what, what what direction do we take with that what have we learned what can we see and perhaps now the psalms can also be a way right we found psalms to be comforting because in the beginning of this course i asked you about your favorite psalms and none of them were terrible it wasn't like you picked psalm 30 Two, I mean, you did. You all picked very psalms that really talked about the comfort and security and hope that God provides. Right? That's mm -hmm. the psalms that you lean on. And if we maybe go to the psalm, the psalter more often. In, I don't. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I just mean it. It could provide uh, a way of looking at this faithfulness that does not dismiss. I think that's what I have learned. It doesn't dismiss. Whatever is the world, it doesn't dismiss the problems that we have. That the what you know the word we learned theodicy, right? The how why isn't God doing all the things we want God to do? Why is there still evil in the world? That's theodicy, right? We have not we're not overlooking that. We've addressed it. We we've, we've said this is this this is contradictory to what we're reading and what what our hope is. So we we know that exists. And somehow, faithfulness is what allows us to rise, to rise above it, if you want to use that word, or, or um, maintain a relationship with it, or, you know, uh, be able to still see the hope that God is offering us in God's promises. Right? No, it's not scientific, friends. Um, it's not scientific at all. That we're not dismissing science, not at all. Just saying that uh, our relationship with God is not scientific. It's not scientific. So often, though, we are faced with things, and I, I think that, again, there's a season for a lot of stuff, and I hope that now the Psalms can be another place that you might go to. Sometimes it's worship or hymnody or being with people that you love, or there are ways that we address this, this theodicy that surrounds us. Why about evil? Right. What do we do? Well, maybe like me, you just take to your bed for a couple of days and then hope <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> um, uh, that doesn't really work, but it does feel comforting at the time. Um, <laughs> you know, until you decide that there may be something else you, you can do. Right. But faithfulness really is important too. All right. What else do you want to say about this chapter? Well, I mean, it's, to me, it's, it's important to understand why he chose certain words or or things, such as I had no clue about the difference between the cedars and the 
the date uh, home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you're sitting there going, okay, so the average reader, at least I'm finding out the average reader, I'm kind of below the average reader level, <laughs> but, you know, just like, okay, so what, I, I, I'm, you can miss the whole message by not having that level of understanding. And you find that with poetry a lot, don't you? Like, yeah. If I don't know, you know, that yeah. the poet has this extreme attraction to nature, and that all the elements of nature are somehow impacted in their lives and they're part of how they tell their story, right? That just takes time knowing the author and praying, of, you know, or just, yeah. spending time, which I would call prayer, right? Like you would call that prayer, yeah. mm -hmm. time. But and how interesting to know that. And and, uh, and I think he chose some of these psalms based on the fact that you can take that learning with you, you know? There is many. There are many references to uh, cedars, to palms, to all kinds of some of the imagery that's been used in the psalms he's chosen. So when you read that in it or hear that on Sunday or read it, you'll be able to say, "Oh yeah, I know. That's the importance of like uh, uh, of providing, like providing food and sturdiness and straight trees for building and you know, like you mm -hmm. you, you you won't you won't forget that. I don't think. Yeah." Yeah, yeah, and it, it is nuanced, and and like many things, um, now he's done his homework, you know, and this is his life's work, and he's a rabbi, you know, like there's all kinds of things here, <laughs> right? I mean, we may say, why the hell did he choose that? You, you know, that that may be, why would you focus in on that or the tenses or whatever it is? But I think uh, he he's. I'm assuming, right, that his knowledge of this, and he tried to narrow it down, because it's not a book on every psalm, right? But he tried to narrow it down to the ones that would give us information about other psalms, you know, as we move forward in our lives to do that. Or at least cause you to read it more than once, or think about a phrase, or... And I think the other thing, knowing that so many of these psalms were drawn from the words of the Hebrew scripture. These didn't, they didn't just, you know, they, they were familiar. They were familiar to the listener. And so they would know that these phrases on justice, on faithfulness, on uh, time would have come from somewhere. They, those are big constructs, right? We have talked about a lot of big constructs in these psalms. Time, justice, love, faithfulness. These are big. And we struggle with them outside of church. We struggle with them in our lives. Maybe not. I would I would suggest that you probably do all the time. I'm not saying that you're cognizant of it or that you're discussing it with people, but these are the big these are the big issues that we face. In trying to decide where is God and how it, you know, what does it mean? What does God mean? What, what how, where is God in my world? All that kind of stuff. These are the big issues. But it's been so. <clears throat> I knew it wasn't going to come out. Excuse me. It's been so interesting to me to know that these are ancient words, and it's still they're still talking about the problems, a lot of the problems mm -hmm. that we face today. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just. Amazing when I think about how old these words are, and here we are still reading them. It's like it's oh, yeah, yeah, and and the ways that, that these words are are enlightened to us through the psalms, through the rabbi mm -hmm. that apply still. Oh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're basic to human. Nature and God's nature. Yeah, and if we had time, wouldn't it be fun to write a song? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what is on your heart? Where are, I mean, that would, if I had thought more thoroughly about this, um, you know, to sort of say, what is on your heart and what metaphors would you use hmm. to talk about those issues where you feel like some of these things are happening, right? What words would you use to express that? Hmm. Um, and to know that that's a, I don't know, it, it, it's a viable, it's not the word, but it's the words coming to mind, a, 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 a way of communicating. It's, 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 a, it's an ancient way of communicating 
what you're feeling or seeing or experiencing or need or want. And it, much like what Lawson would describe as a prayer language, that's what these are. That's what these are. These are prayers. Yeah. That's a great um, thought. Yeah. To write a song. To and write a song. To express. <laughs> <laughs> For some, I was uh, scary to other Only people. Only for my eyes. <laughs> well, there's always, well, there's always the opportunity, uh, yeah. if, you know, if it so befalls you. I, I just think Maybe that left breath right, can pray. Um, yeah, we can pray, not so creatively, but <laughs> it's all right. It doesn't have to be creative. <laughs> well, um, well, I like uh, the metaphors because the metaphors um, give you a vision too. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it reminded me of like EFM when they say that nothing you can never really understand something until you can put it in the form um, of a metaphor. Yeah, that's the closest we get. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's right. And that's why, um, you know, when uh, I, I, there's that word mystery that we throw around. You know, I mean, I do. I throw it around. Um, you know, in, in attempts to explain certain things, we fall back on the idea that it's a mystery, that it cannot be explained by humanity or this side of that world, right? It, it, it can be explained on the other side of the world. And otherwise, we would not, we would no longer be seeking. We would be those who know. And I wonder what that changes. Somehow humility is tied up in the unknowing. Is it not? When we all get to that spot where we think we know, is that not our downfall? Yeah. Is that not where we can stumble? Is that not where we think, where, where we become God? We're not longer humble. When, I, 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 there's, I'm not talking about you know self-flagellation or any of that. What I mean is there's something about unknowing that leads us to pursue it, to stay engaged with it, to you know not let it go. If we think we know, then we stop. We stop. You know, there's a chicken casserole recipe that I've made for a thousand times, and then I stopped making it for some, I don't know why. I, probably because it has cream soup in it, right? So I have gone through a time in my life when I gave up the cream soup mm -hmm. recipes, and I tried to make it again, and I had to go back and find the recipe. Right? Because I tried without looking. And it was awful. <laughs> it was ridiculously awful. And no one would eat it. Um, not even Todd, who eats most everything I make. So anyway, just, I, I was thinking of that as, 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 as a simple way. But we all can have it. We probably all have had opportunities when we've been presented with that sort of learning um, that comes from the lack of humility. Uh, when we forget that we are of God, but we are not God. Psalms can help us remember that. Mm -hmm. Psalms can help us remember that. And so at the end of the chapter, he does go into the, the part about the, the four quartets. When, then in the beginning, in the end is our beginning, and in the beginning intimations of the end and so the poem or the psalm has turned back on itself the telling and the singing goes on eternally in god's house here and now before and beyond it is this is the last uh, two chat two paragraphs on 146 i'm sorry it is the telling the recitation that allows us to enter into that moment the eternal moment it is the singing of the psalm that plants us as pillars in the entranceway of God's house. And the tradition tied to this psalm, to the Sabbath, the day on which we can stop the work of the week and sing to God. Entering the Sabbath and reciting the psalm, we are allowed a poetic moment in which eternity is made present. If we are faithful, if we recite the celebratory words. <laughs> Does not mean it doesn't happen? The if is not like if you if you participate. The if is 
that is the one way that you can participate. That is one of the ways in which you can participate. But you won't do it if you're not participating. It's, it's not punishment. What I'm saying is it's only in the participation that, we, that, it, that it occurs. Like if we don't participate, we're not part of it. You know, what's that expression? You got to be in it to win it. <laughs> maybe, it's, uh, maybe that's a little too crass, but I think that's part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Psalm 150. Huh. And again, the beginning and the end, he makes a connection to Psalm 1, trees planted by living water, right? And comes back around to this praise psalm, which... It probably would be the, one of the easiest ones to memorize. <laughs> yeah. Ginger, Rastology. would you? Read? Yes. Ginger, will you read this? Sure. Psalm 150. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the sky, his stronghold. Praise him for his victories. Praise him for his exceeding greatness. Praise with blast of the horn. Praise with harp and lyre. Praise with timbrel and dance. Praise with lute and pipe. Praise with resounding cymbals. Praise with loud clashing cymbals. Let all that breathes praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. So I often wonder about those church traditions that don't allow music. I don't know how you could read, you know, I don't even know how you would justify that. And so anyway, uh, here's this invitation that all kinds of instruments can be used to praise God. How important it is, this, this joyful noise that we make, mm -hmm. that we call music, again and again. I mean, the last three verses are turned over entirely to, to singing praise with instruments. I'm off for liturgical dance. Yeah. These days, just brace yourself. She may just break out in liturgical dance down in the middle Yeah, it happen. Dance, <laughs> dance. Wherever you may be. Right. Now. I've right. seen liturgical dance and he can be right pretty. You know, he can yeah. be, yes ma'am. What do you think about his uh he uh he says that this is like a Russian doll in reverse. The smaller dolls <laughs> reveal larger ones without till the largest everything that has breath is uncovered. Mm -hmm. So to a simple chorus, all the way to all of humanity. Mm -hmm. Let all that breathes. We often think of that when we hear crickets and locusts and birds and yeah, they're praising God. They're praising God, right? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. You know, or the bird singing its head off this morning. It was just beautiful to hear a bird that early in the morning. And it, but I noticed Sunday that the songbirds were. Yeah, because I don't, you know, it's been very quiet. Yeah, and that because we haven't had blowers or mowers. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> you don't have that too. Well, the church, uh, the golf course, uh, the golf course property. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, so we haven't had that, but uh, there were birds. Yeah. There were birds, and it just does change. It does something inside of me. Uh, yeah. Yes. Pure praise. And how about he? Yes, that the author of this poem, this psalm, does use the repetition of the word praise. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we consider that to be a form of prayer. Like uh, we might call it adoration or praise. This is one of the five types of prayer um, that's listed in our prayer book. <laughs> but um, what does it say about the time to come, right? If this is about time, this, I think there's still time involved in this psalm as well, in this poem. What does it say about that? This, is this just what we are to do here? Yeah, day by day. 
day by day. I know. It, it continues, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. And it goes on eternally. I think this is the thing. This is, at least it's the expectation that the psalmist give us that, that in the next life, there is music. There is praise. There is and music joyful and wonderful. Yeah, and joyful and wonderful. Yes, I heard his songbird yesterday harmonizing down the their way down the aisle. It was so beautiful. It gave me chill bucks too. Mm -hmm. It was so pretty. I can't even sing. Like well, she was, she was she was carrying the whole thing. She was beautiful. What? Well, you were no. There was somebody else singing beside Maisie. Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it was pretty. Whatever it was, I think it was coming out of Maisie's mouth. But it is something that we can experience even now. The salt that Rabbi Feld tells us this. This is why we get so connected. This is why people cry at hymns. Mm -hmm. This is why they cry with church or any so, music. This is why music touches some emotional part of us, I think, because it connects us to something we have not yet experienced fully. Yes, there is nostalgia. That it reminds us of something, mm -hmm. but I think there is also again the future, the promise, the hope, and it connects us to that as well. And I think that's what the emotion is often. Is it is it Amy Grant that has that wonderful song, "Sing Your Praise to the Lord"? Come on, everybody! I don't know. Oh, that's an awesome song. Mm -hmm. I don't so recognize that. You know, Amy yeah. McGrant does have a lot of songs. Mm -hmm. that she, but that one's everything that we're reading and talking about. Mm -hmm. Sing your song to the Lord. So if we go to the, I'm going to see where we are here. We have 11 minutes, but I, so I don't want to jump to the end. But I would say that if you want to recommend this book to someone who doesn't like to read, you can just have them read his last two paragraphs of each chapter, which have been so poignant. Yeah. And I would it continues in this on this chapter where he said, Some of us may feel that we that too may feel that, uh, meaning that um, God's voice is speaking to them as we read Psalms. For others, what Psalms offer is at least this voices enunciating the same concern our own souls contain. Yep. Here are poems that give expression to the most deeply felt spiritual moments, joy, despair, hope. The words of the psalmist so deeply felt, so artfully displayed, frequently so simple, as in this particular psalm, I think, most often profoundly expressed, can become an accompaniment to our own spiritual journey. In reading these words, we are comforted, if only for having found a voice to join with ours. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes, in my own loneliness, I, too, am able to join in the psalmist chorus and hear a voice of redemption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So his, his honesty has also come mm -hmm. to this book from time to time, and I think there we're hearing it again, right? It's a full range of how we experience God, uh, you know, the whole thing. So it's not like, I don't think you've, I hope you haven't ended up in reading the book and feeling like, well, that's never, I'm never going to, I can't, that's not me. I don't know that, I can't, you know what I mean? I think he's found many ways for you to enter into this you know, discussion, into the Psalms, into the feelings. So I hope so anyway. It was wonderful. Good. I appreciate that. I'm glad I could introduce him to you. Anything else that anyone wants to say or perhaps someplace you're still, I mean, struggling is great. And um, we can turn over and look on the back if you've got the handout, the, the Natalie Sleet song, A Hymn of Promise. Um, Good words. It is. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons, a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. 
In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed unto its season, something God alone can see. In the end is our beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity, in our death a resurrection, at the last a victory, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. That's such beautiful words. Mm -hmm. um, that's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You can look it up on the YouTube. There are several choral. Um, it would be fun to Ellen put it on. Put it tune to this. Sing that. Yeah, there's lots of lots of tunes for it. Oh, there's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying. It's uh, if you go on YouTube, you can hear several choral adaptations of it. Hmm. Do it myself. Mm -hmm. I guess so. You can write your. You can write one too and add it to YouTube. Yeah. So, Amy Grant's song was "Sing Your Praise to the Lord." Oh, okay. You said "Sing Your Song." Right? Thank you. Sing your praise. Are you praise? Yeah, it is Amy Grant's. <laughs> sing your praise to the Lord. Come on, everybody, stand up and sing one more. Hallelujah. Give your praise to the Lord. It keeps on going and going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and she uh, she is amazing, isn't she? She is good. Yes. Oh, tidbit. She was a sorority sister of mine. Oh, a yeah. sister of mine. And she transferred into Vanderbilt. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so for we had to do something to entertain. Uh, it, we were a fall pledge class, which was a small pledge class with Vandy pledges in the spring. And I didn't pledge the first time, so I pledged in my fall year. Second year, uh, we had to do something to entertain a show for the uh, members. And so we went to her studio. It was so much fun playing with all the different things you could play with in the studio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so she came and entertained y'all. Well, we we helped. <laughs> we weren't too good, but she... <laughs> it was an all for one and one for all. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. All right. Well, uh, a blessed Lent to each of you as you. You know, uh, decide how it is you're going to travel these 40 days. And even if you decide to do nothing, you've still decided something. Um, <laughs> that's the way that works, friends. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, you know, I, I'm a fan of taking on things as opposed to letting go of things, unless it's, there's something in your life that you need to let go of. You know, there's no there's no one way to do it. And um and I look again. I'm going to put the plug in for Wednesday nights and uh, Sunday mornings. We're going to be doing Stations of the Cross starting this Sunday. Uh, we're going to do Stations One and Two, uh, different ways for you to explore the stations. Uh, maybe perhaps in a more in a different way. That's all we're hoping for. Um, That's we, at ten o'clock. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So we're going to try to uphold that part of our Lenten. Uh, Discipline that says we're going to read and meditate and study on God's holy word. Okay. In small chunks, right? Uh, the stations are based on scripture. So it is in small chunks that we do that, but we are doing it. And even if it's just that, it's something you weren't doing before. So. Well, Wednesday nights, what time Wednesday nights? Uh, I think the classes are going to start at 7. No, 530. Yeah. We, 530 we have dinner. Yeah. No, no, 5.30 we have church, yeah. 6 o'clock we have dinner, 6.30 we start the program. We should uh, be finished. Okay. We have the dinner, who's doing but I thought you said it's not going to be Zoom Live because it's not... Even. Well, we might still record it. Yeah, so record it, yeah. So you might have to watch it Thursday morning during yeah. Bible study time. Yeah. <laughs> um, that would be Lynn, nice. Lynn knows who's doing yeah. the dinners, I don't know. You have different people on the phone. Yeah, I can't remember. You'll be doing okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sharon will be best drink, which is the 28th, and I need to get an email about that out today. Yeah, like two weeks from now. Yeah. And when is the okay? You know. That's I, yeah. okay. I think it's the, it's the week I'm gone. It's the week where I'm the best drink. I'm sorry, could, could you say that again? 
have in front of you what dates the Death Street Den or the uh, I'm sorry the yeah, the, the dinners are when what we the kids doing it. Uh the oh I see what you're saying. Just a minute, I'll tell you. Thirteenth. That sounds right. March thirteenth. That sounds right. Toby's leading the class, and uh, we'll be on the best room. Yeah. I, I I see what you're asking. Um, yeah. You, found it. It. you got we it. Found it. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thanks okay. Um, and Allison, I would just like to say I thought this book was fantastic. Well, I hope you. I hope you're able to introduce it to other groups. I really do. I know you have that. Uh, evangelism spirit, so I hope you spread it far and wide. Well, uh, I hope to because it, it's it, it's deep, but it is uh, it's still you can still get it. Like you say, if you read the last paragraph, <laughs> <right, laughs> then you say, "Oh, <laughs> yeah." That's where he was going. I didn't yeah. even yeah. say so. <laughs> and no. he, did, he did. He did in many, in many different ways, and I think. Yes, and I, I, I think that's what I've appreciated it, about it uh, myself. So um, it was accessible. Uh, it, I, I tried to do it on my own, like look at Psalms and what which Psalms, I, and I thought I cannot. I it is it's, it's a lifetime of study. It's a lifetime, of study. and yeah. I'm glad you shared it. Right. Yeah. All right, friends. Have a great Thursday, and. Uh, See you on the Zoom or in person soon. Peace. Peace be with Peace. everybody.